When I started to learn Go, I ran into this kind of API pretty quick. It has something called context as a first parameter. So I wonder, hmm, what is context and why do we need it? If you have the same question as I did back then, this video is for you. But before we answer those two questions, let's look into where this context comes from. So context package was added into standard libraries in Go 1.7 in 2016. Before that, it lived in another side project of Golang.org. In 2014, it was introduced in a Go blog post. That blog post is something we need to look into. Okay, it said that at Google, we require that Go programmers pass a context parameter as the first argument to every function on a call pass between incoming and outgoing requests. It provides simple control over timeouts and cancellation and ensure that critical values like security credentials transit Go programs properly. So that's a lot of information. So what it tells that when to use context, right? It's for both incoming and outgoing requests. Actually, I look into the library these days and find that there are three of them that are still using context. One is Net, one is Database SQL, the other one is OS Execution. Obviously, Net were related to both incoming and outgoing requests. Database SQL is mostly about outgoing requests. OS Execution is more about running application. It should be another outgoing request. And it also answers another question, why do we need context? First, we need to pass cancellation signals and deadlines. And that's related to three APIs in the context package, with cancel, with timeout, and with deadline. And the other one is share request scope values, with value APIs for that. Next, let's look into what is a context. Context basically is just interface. And the most commonly used properties, one is the down channel, which pass the signals about you know, context is, is finished, is done. And the other one is the value API, given a key return the value. Then let's look into some internal data structure in the context package. One is cancel context. You can see that it has a done property, which is a, a lazy critic channel. That data structure is returned and used by the with cancel API. The second one is time context. It embed the cancel contact, so which means it also has the done channel. And in addition, it has the timer and the deadline. That one is used by the with deadline and with timeout. The last one is value context. It's obviously it's used by the with value API. But please note that this structure only has one pair of key value. So which means if you create a context by with value, it can only contain one key value. What if you want to have multiple values? The answer for that is context tree, and we will cover that later. But before that, let's revisit the blog post again because it has an additional requirement. It says a context is safe for simultaneous use by multiple Go routines. That one is pretty important because it says the context has to be Go routine safe. But how to achieve that? Actually, the context package uses something called immutable context, which means a new context is created for all the API that we just mentioned, with value, with cancel, with deadline, and with timeout. And that will lead us to something called context tree. And that context tree has two data flows. One is for cancellation signals, and the other one is for get values. Let's look at some example. So let's say we have a main function, and it create a context one, and use that to spawn go routine one, and go routine one create context two from context one, and pass it to go routine two and go routine three, and create another context three from context two, and pass it to G four and G five, and eventually create context four from from context two, and pass it to go routine six. Okay, a pretty simple use case of context and go routines. And now, what if the go routine six want to get some value from the context four? It will call the value API on context four with some key. Context four will look into its own data structure. If the key exists there, it just return the value. Otherwise, it will goes back to context two, which is its parent, and all the way back to context one. So okay, that's the bottom up approach. The top down happens when you want to cancel some context. So let's say in the main function want to cancel context one, it called the cancel function and the context one will send the signal to its done channel. 
After that, it will try to cancel all its children. In this case, it's contact two. And then contact two will cancel all its own children, which is contact three and four. All right, pretty simple, right? That's all about contact tree and the data flows. Now let's look at some practical use case of contacts. So we have two standpoints for a contact. One is provider, one is consumer. Let's look at provider first. So the first thing we need to remember that whenever you call with cancel, with timeout, or with deadline, it will return a cancel function. Please remember to defer cancel right after creation because usually a contact should not escape the function that creates it, right? So always remember to use defer cancel. The other thing to remember is that when you use with value API, always create a private type for the context key and wrap the key in that context type so that anything outside of your package will not be able to override that value because they have no access to that private type. So switch to the standpoint of consumer. Just one thing, always you select on the done channel to create a long request as soon as possible when a contact is canceled. Or probably you just pass the contacts to another function, which will do the same thing, right? Eventually somebody need to call the select on the done channel. Otherwise, you know, the contacts are useless. All right. That's all I want to talk about contacts. Hopefully you find it helpful. Please subscribe to our channel if you want to dive into more Golden Standard Libraries in the future with me. All right, see you next time.